Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. If you want to catch the show live, we are live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fridays. So if you can go ahead and catch it there. And uh, today we are covering the Linux news. So first up, Tails has a point release, 6.6. They have increased, um, they, they, they have improved persistent storage, added support for some newer hardware. One of the big major things that they did in this one is they have went back to an older method where you can run different network stacks. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, this goes back to where you could effectively select. I, mean, I don't know if this is the exact one or not. There was a time you could actually select your exit node. That's one of the big limitations on Tails right now is you're stuck on whatever exit node they give you. And if it sucks, you have no choice but to shut everything down and reboot the system and hope you get on a different one. I would really love to see an option to say this exit node sucks. Get me a new one. Your entrance node that rotates on a regular basis. So uh, there's a um, that's good. And you always have the ability to go in with a new entry node, uh, but, uh, or, uh, um, a new identity, but that impacts your, your entry node, not your exit node. So your exit node always stays crappy, whatever it happens to be. Um, uh, but, uh, the, this one here, it does revert back. Where is that spot? I thought it was in this somewhere. I want to actually read it, uh, specifically. Um, but, uh, they have added a number of different things. There you go. Reintroduces the ability to enable multiple network interfaces, addresses an issue and then connecting to the Tor network using default bridges. I've noticed that as an issue lately and improves tail cloner by removing the 30 second wait time when song cloner. Okay. So it's multiple network interfaces. So if you want to do ethernet and or wireless, you have multiple ones. That That's what I had. Uh, my apologies there. And uh, just updates on on the basic software, new version of the browser, new version of Thunderbird, a new version of Tor itself, et cetera, et cetera. But you can go ahead and get that, of course, if you already have a 6 edition, you can all just update to that automatically just by booting into Tails and letting it go. Uh, for those that like Raspberry Pis, there is a newer Raspberry Pi 5 going on sale. This one is the lower spec one. So the 5 released with this... Um, a uh, four gigabyte and an eight gigabyte model. Four gigabyte was 60, the eight gigabyte is 80. I'm running the uh, eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi in my production machine running MX Linux and it doesn't even run like it's a Raspberry Pi. The thing is absolutely runs like a regular desktop computer. Uh, this one here is for people who don't need so much power and it is at a lower price point of $50 with two gigabytes of RAM. They also use the cost optimized Broadcom BCM 2720D0 SOC, which they say is functionally identical to the one they have in the other Pi models, but it is cheaper to make. And so they are creating this newer version for people that don't need a full desktop computer. Maybe they're just running some network stack that just doesn't need the power. I mean, you think about it, you can run Pi-hole perfectly fine in your own custom DNS on an old Raspberry Pi Nano. So, you know, the five that I have is complete overkill for something like that. My NAS servers run just fine on the Raspberry Pi 4s with 4 gigs of RAM. Even my Kodi box runs perfectly fine on a Raspberry Pi 2 with, I think I have 2 gigs of RAM in that. And so it's like, you know, you don't don't need the absolute most amazing cutting edge for everything that you're doing. And the more you cut it back a little bit, the lower power it is. So if power savings is your option, that is certainly a, a good approach to do. And so... Uh, that is definitely something's out there. And yeah, I know there's other ones out there. There's other competitors. There's the Orange Pies. And there's even an Intel-based one with almost the exact same footprint and even layout of the Raspberry Pi 5, which is interesting. I kind of want to get my hands on one of those just to see how well that guy works. Uh, maybe do some side-by-side -side comparisons to him. Uh, but there is, uh, for those that are interested in the Raspberry Pi market, that is uh, a newer option. Now we have an interesting one. Of course, um, GNOME has all sorts of weird functionalities and are doing all sorts of neat things with it. Uh, now you can set your Gravatar as your user account pick. 
This is a new extension. It looks like it just came out a few months ago uh, from looking through the uh, commit changes on the GitHub repository. It is an unofficial extension, so it's not developed by the GNOME team. It's just an independent person. But effectively, what he has done is created a system that allows you to use the Gravatar system to put your user profile. Now, if you're unaware with the Gravatar system, this is a company acquired by Automatic, the same people that created WordPress. You sign up for it with a simple email address and then any account that you use that email address on with Gravatar, it will use whatever logo you have appointed. So um, I believe, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think Google uses Gravatar. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Obviously, WordPress does. Numerous other services. Uh, Discus does. Uh, they actually think they have a list of other, other applications in here that, that use Gravatar. Uh, but it allows you to create a a logo like a whatever your logo or your user icon onto that service and then anywhere you use that email address that supports gravatar rather than you having to upload a new logo it will just pull from the one on your main gravatar site allowing you to change that one place on gravatar and then that will update it on all places that you use it so for a person that needs this type of functionality or just wants to use that you now have the ability to use gravatar with gnome uh, but it's as we said not an official extension right now it only supports gnome 46 so you can go ahead and uh, of course all of the articles are linked in the description of the video just follow the web page over to my site at switch to linux.com you can find the show notes there and that'll have all of the uh, all of the um, show notes so you can go ahead and grab that and on to our last story, Debian, one of the absolute cores, 31 years old. I'm sorry, I think I said 32 before I started recording. Uh, but Debian is 31 years old. Uh, Febu on Friday, August 16th, 2024, with tags Debian, birthday, anniversary, Debian day. Um, so, of course, um, this is the 31-year anniversary. Now, Debian is, to my knowledge, the second oldest active Linux distribution behind, I think, Slackware. And so Debian has done some amazing things over the years. Of course, it's one of the main cores. Debian is the core base that Ubuntu is based on. So all these Ubuntu distributions have Debian as their grandfather. So this is one of the most significant Linux distributions there is. It is well known for its stability. This is one of the most rock solid distributions, which is actually why they use it on the International Space Station. So yeah, you're talking to people, oh yeah, you got that space station, guess what they use? Debian. Why? Because Windows keeps on crashing and the over air updates, you just don't need an over air update going up to space, clogging up all the bandwidth, and then crashing the whole system down. No, we're going to stick with Debian. Thank you. Uh, but uh, they have, uh, they've just done so many amazing things. Raspberry Pi, we've talked about that earlier. Raspberry Pi OS is based on Debian. It is also one of the systems that still supports your old 32-bit computers. So 32-bit computers are, are in this. ARM computers are in this. Every architecture there is known, I believe, Debian is running on. And it's just a, a really nice, um, uh, really nice, really good distribution as they have evolved over the years to producing a, a very good, very stable platform that you can run. Of course, if you want the, the Linux Mint experience, you can use LMDE, the Linux Mint based on Debian also. And then there's a number of other Debian-based distros out there also. Of course, there's also Dev1, uh, closely related, which is Debian without System D. Uh, basically uses the exact same system, just with um, uh, non-System D. It must be Sysint, I think, or SysV. I don't know. I forget which which one Dev1 is using. But the um, uh, the Debian project is very significant and is now 31 years old. So think about that. That is how old. Uh, of, obviously, Linux is a little older, but this is just an amazing thing to see. So happy birthday to Debian. Congratulations on a wonderful distribution. Well, if you want to help support the channel, you can find us over there on Patreon, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. So you can uh, jump on over there. And of course, uh, we will, uh, I believe in September, we should get the new series out. We are on the finishing touches of 
uh, uh, finishing out the book. That's going to be available. And I think when that comes out, I will experiment with the... um, uh, Patreon has an option where I can actually upload digital files for sale, which I think I can do do cheaper or even free if you're a Patreon supporter or paid if you're a free Patreon member. Uh, so you can uh, I'll put that book up there when I when I get to that. But uh, once that book is done, we move right back in and hopefully September we start our uh, season two of our science fiction short stories, which I already have a pile of ideas over here stuck to my wall with various sticky notes. So jump on over there on patreon.com slash T-O-M-M to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.